and welcome back to our series on the 70-740 certification with Microsoft and we're going to continue our discussion about installing and managing Windows services and in this case we're going to begin talking about managing the Windows services as always there's multiple ways to be able to manage our Windows services uh, in this case I'm going to highlight two main areas uh, the first one is with the services control panel which is available for us in the GUI in order to manage our Windows services. And the second one is by using PowerShell. Uh, PowerShell is an all-important all aspect of Windows services, or Windows Server nowadays, uh, so it's important to make sure that we know both of these aspects. So let's go ahead and get started talking about our Windows services uh, with the services control panel. Uh, so there's a couple of different ways we can get to it. Probably the easiest is here on Server Manager. We can come on up here to the Tools right next to Manage which, that we looked at in the last video. Uh, next to Tools we have our Services tool that we can use to manage it. So let's go ahead and click on Services and this will open up and list out the name of all the services that are happening on our system. So we can see here we have the name of all of our services. We have a very brief description of those services. We have the status of that service, whether it's running or not, as well as a startup type. Does it have to start up manually or automatically or with a delayed start? And then lastly, who does it log in as? Does it connect as the local system? Does it connect as a domain user or so on? Now on this server, I have actually just installed the web services, so I'm going to go ahead and pick on the uh, on the www services. There we go. Uh, simply because I know I can play with it, and I know I can break it without negatively hurting my server. So there's a couple of different things I can do. First off, we can see, well, the World Wide Web Publishing Service, which is my Internet, Expl Internet Information Services, or my web server, depending on how you look at it, uh, have the description. It is currently running, and it's configured to automatically start when the computer starts up. So I have a couple of options. Up here at the top of the services panel, I could see I have a little arrow here, a little triangle that I could click on to say start the service. Uh, it's currently grayed out because it is running. You can't start a running service. Next to that, we have a big old box, which is for stopping the service, pausing the service, and then restarting the service. So if I wanted to stop this service, I could go ahead and just click the stop button and we'll see right there, it pops up a message saying it's in the process of stopping it. And then when it's done, the status of the service has changed from running to blank, meaning it is not running. We can then click on the green button now that is no longer grayed out to allow me to start the service. And the status now changed back to running. And if I want to, there is also a restart service, which is a combination of the two. It will first stop it and then start it. There we go. These buttons are also accessible. If I right click on the service name, I can see I have right here, start, stop, resume, uh, pause, resume, and restart. However, if I wanted to get more details, I could click on Properties and I get in more details about the service. Again, right here is the service status and my buttons to start and stop the service. Here I could change the startup type. There's automatic, so start with the operating system. There's automatic delayed start, so start with the operating system, but wait a few moments before you start running. There's manual, so only run when I tell you to run, only if I tell you to start running should you run. And then disabled, don't run at all. 
So I'm going to go ahead and set this to manual. And if I click apply, well, we can see in the background here, the startup type has changed from automatic to manual. I can change the login account. For instance, right now it's running as the local system. Sometimes there's situations where you need that to change. So I can change it to an account and I can type in a service account along with a password and then it could access the the network or the rest of my environment using domain admin or domain user credentials. There's also There's also a recovery tab. Sometimes services crash on your system, just like your applications do. And so the recovery tab allows us to take some actions if an error occurs. Uh, for instance, after a first failure, right now it's set to take no action. I could have it simply restart the service. So after the first, if the failure occurs one time, it will restart the web service. If it happens a second time, I can say go ahead and restart the web service again. And then possibly after that, uh, let's go ahead and restart the computer to allow the system to recover from common failures. And then lastly, I can view the dependencies for this one service. Uh, for instance, it requires the Windows Process Activation Service, which also requires the RPC service which requires the DOM and RPC endpoint service. So that is a very quick run through of configuring and managing the Windows services using the services control panel. We're going to do the same thing with a different service, this time with the print spooler, uh, using PowerShell. So if we come back to our Windows system here, let's go ahead and open up PowerShell. And I'm going to right click on this guy and say run as administrator. Because I'm starting and stopping services on this system, I need to make sure I'm able to run as an administrator so that uh, I have permissions to be able to do that. Okay, first command I want to type is actually it's a very simple one. It's just simply get service and hit enter and it lists off all of the services that are currently on my system. Uh, if we scroll up here to, to the top, there we go. Uh, it shows me the status, stopped or running shows me the name of the service and this is a short name that the system uses internally to reference itself and then has the display name which is what we would expect to see uh, when we're looking at the services control panel uh, so for for instance I am looking for the print spooler that I want to change and mess around with uh, so if I keep scrolling down here I can see it is this line right here the display name print spooler that's what we look for as humans uh, however the computer sees it as just simply spooler and its current state is running so now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna play with some of that let me clear up some space here uh, so first off we we did the get service command we can actually do a get service with a specific service name, such as spooler, and it gives us out the details for that one service. We can also add in a few more commands here, such as the pipe and select star, and it gives us Mac a lot more information about that specific service, such as its startup type, uh, which is what we might need to change. So we can see, yes, uh, it is the print spooler. Its current status is running. It's currently configured to automatically start. And we can even see that it has some dependencies listed. So what we're going to do is, well, if it's running, let's go ahead and try to stop it. Uh, if we did get service in order to get the service, 
in order to stop it, well, we do a stop service. And then simply the service name. No error comes back, nothing comes back, which is a good sign. That means it took what we told it and it changed it. Uh, and then if I go ahead and do the get service command again, we can now see that the status has changed to stopped. Well, if stop service stopped it, well, start service probably will start it. Check the status of it again, and we can see, yes, the status has now changed to running. Awesome. Well, what if I wanted to do both of those at the same time? If I wanted to both stop the service and then restart it automatically, well, there's a restart service command, which this time is not gonna show us anything new, uh, even when we look at the service itself, because it was running before and now it's running still again. The other item we might wanna look at here is the startup type. Currently the startup type is set to automatic uh, possibly we don't want that to happen and so we want to change that via PowerShell. Well for that there's a specific command called set service and set service can actually do a whole bunch uh, so I'm going to do the help command in front of set service uh, just to be able to look at the details here and we can see set service with the machine with the service name and then we can change startup type to boot, system, automatic, manual, or disabled. I'm gonna go ahead and set it to manual. So in order to do that, I'm just gonna go ahead and type in set service. The service name is spooler. And startup type is manual. And then hit enter. Again, no messages come back, that's a good thing. And if I do my get service command, we can see the startup type has now changed to manual. And now, next time the system reboots, it will not automatically start the spooler. I will have to go in and enable it. Some services, that is a desired method, that's a desired configuration, is that you will go in and you will configure the service yourself. Well, there we have it. That is a very quick and brief overview about how we can actually manage our Windows services uh, using both the GUI as well as using PowerShell uh, in order to change the service state as well as the service startup type and possibly other options that we might need in our environment.